I couldn't tell her how, when I ate breakfast or drove to school, I'd sometimes hear his voice as clearly as if he were sitting next to me and wonder if he was trying to contact me. I'd have long, out loud conversations with him when no one else was around. I loved the feeling of him being nearby. I didn't believe people could reach out from the other side. But what if they could, and he was trying, and I ignored him? Yet I felt crazy when I talked to him, and I was so afraid of feeling crazy. You've always been afraid of having psychiatric problems like your mother, Noelle said as if she'd read my mind. She could spook me that way. I think it's your biggest fear, but you're one of the sanest people I know. She got to her feet, taking in a deep breath as she stretched her arms high over her head. Your mother had a chemical thing, she said, letting her long, slender arms fall to her sides again. You don't. You won't ever. The floodgates. I looked up at her from the desk chair. I didn't want her to leave. I'm afraid of opening them. You won't drown, she said. Drowning isn't part of your makeup. She bent low to hug me. I love you, she said, and I'm a phone call away. I'd polish the granite countertop until the ceiling lights glowed on its surface. Then I dared to look at the photograph of Sam, Grace, and me on the refrigerator again. Noelle had helped me sort through so much on that hot, miserable July night. Yet one emotion still remained unchecked inside me. Fear that I was failing my daughter. Grace stood between Sam and me in the picture, smiling, and only someone very observant might notice how she leaned toward Sam and away from me. He'd left me alone with a child I didn't know how to mother, a child I longed to know but who wouldn't let me in, a child who blamed me for everything. He left me alone with the stranger upstairs.